dear sister you are in such deep pain you wonder if life is even worth living like this dear young man you have so many dreams and some things have happened in the past few months and it seems like dark clouds are hiding the sun for you dear pastor as you struggle with financial needs you begin to wonder if it really makes sense to follow your calling to serve others when you are in pain yourself let me encourage you my brother we pastors are also what many refer to as wounded healers we carry our own pain our wounds and find the lord is healing others through us keep pressing on now we come to the second stanza verses 12 to 21 let's just take time and read it shall we psalms chapter 22 verses 12 to 21 many bulls surround me strong bulls of bashan and circle me roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me i am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint my heart has turned to wax it has melted within me my mouth is dried up like a pot's herd and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth you lay me in the dust of death dogs surround me a pack of villains encircles me they pierce my hands and my feet all my bones are on display people stare and gloat over me they divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment but you lord do not be far from me you are my strength come quickly to help me deliver me from the sword my precious life from the power of the dogs rescue me from the mouth of the lions save me from the horns of the wild oxen now this stanza verses 12 to 21 uses some of the most extreme metaphors for the enemies of the psalmist who are out to just tear him apart he uses language of animals for human beings zoomorphic images these are situations he is in and he has human enemies and he's completely undone he's helpless he surrounded he says by the strong bulls of bashan who seek to gore out his intestines they are like lions roaring for his flesh they are like ferocious scavenger dogs villains he says have pierced his feet and hands or as you will notice in the footnote of the niv some manuscripts have it as they have bitten into him like a lion the psalmist's heart is like wax melting away and in his fear and terror his mouth is dried up he's unable to speak you know when we also have experiences of that so while some people are gloating over him they are happy that he's dying they are ready to divide his clothes as spoils amongst themselves but where is god in all this where is he well in verse 15 the psalmist says you god you lay me in the dust of the earth in other words it seems like god is allowing him to die so what does the psalmist do what should we do one thing he does not do friends is he does not curse god and die 
He does not say, I am done with this God thing. There is no God. Rather, he begins to petition God. So the next three verses, 19 to 21, he uses the covenant name of God. Do you see the word L-O-R-D in capital letters in your English Bibles? That represents the four letters in Hebrew, yod He vav He, which no modern Jew would ever pronounce. They would rather say Adonai or Hashem, the name, or I am. Adonai, the great I am, come and deliver me from the sword, from the dogs, from the lions and from the wild oxen. Interestingly, if you read the, this stanza, you will find first the order is different and there's a reverse order at the end. He is carefully crafting his prayer. And so he pleads with God again, come quickly, help me, deliver me, rescue me. And now we come to the final part of the psalm. Verses 22 to 31. Let us read it together. Psalm 22, verses 22 to 31. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generation will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to the people, at unborn, he has done it. As we come to the third stanza of the psalm, we notice a sudden change in setting and tone. No explanation given. Whether the psalmist writes this down later or what, that's how it is. But he feels different and seemingly his circumstances are different now. Till now, it was as if he was singing a song in a minor key. Suddenly, it has changed into a major key. And so the psalmist expresses his desire to declare God's majesty and greatness to God's people in the congregation. So we have the first praise section, 22 to 26, for believing Israelites within the congregation. He wants to praise God among them. But in the last part, 27 to 31, he wants to praise God for among all the people of the world. The Old Testament scholar Bruce Waltke, one of my teachers, said, this is a doxological lament. Doxology is giving praise. And yet there is lament. Now the psalmist gives three commands to the people of God who fear Adonai. He says, praise Adonai. Honor, I am. Revere, Adonai. Why? Verse 24, he says, because God hears. Beyond hearing, he listens to the cry of the afflicted ones. Let me be very honest here. I don't know about you, but I'm not very good at listening. 
That's what my family constantly reminds me about. But thank God, the Lord, the I Am, Adonai, will never close his ears to the cry of his people. God always not only hears, he listens to our prayers. He has not hidden his face from the righteous sufferer. Look at that text. If Jesus was reciting this psalm, either if he was able to go through the whole psalm, speak it out in the pain, I don't know. But surely, having memorized it, the psalm was going through his mind and it says, he has not abandoned the righteous sufferer. The rich and the poor, he says, will eat in the festivals that are going to be celebrated. This is party time, a time of celebration with others. That is before the final party we read about in Revelation, the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he says, God's rule will be over all the earth. The great promise that we have in Christ Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, as we read in Philippians 2, verse 10 and 11. And then he says, even those who go down to the dust, to death, they will praise God. Because death is the ultimate enemy, not of human beings, but of God, who is a living God. The psalmist does not know that the Lord Jesus will come, the great son of David, and inaugurate the kingdom of God, which will have no end. Future generations, and here we are almost 3,000 years after David, we are proclaiming the righteousness of Adonai. Why? For he has done it. Friends, we need to align our prayers this biblical way. When life is beyond our control, it's messed up, learn along, pray along with the psalmist. We can express our raw emotions before God. I sometimes ask songwriters and worship leaders to learn from these lament and protest psalms and write and lead God's people into this kind of honest worship. Because when we protest against present evil in the world, we name what is wrong in this age so that we look forward to the age to come where God will one day put back all things and make them right. The righteousness of God will prevail. All nations are moving towards the final reconciliation and healing of the world where God will heal the evil and suffering and bring redemption. Dear friend, where are you on this journey today? Maybe you are in deep pain because a family member or close friend has passed away recently. And you did whatever you could. You even prayed fervently. But things have not worked out that way. Some time ago, I spoke to a dear friend and his wife. He is a pastor and his wife is a daughter of a pastor. She said how she had been in grief for more than a year. She had lost her younger sister, very young. And she prayed and begged God and God did not answer. My wife and I sat and listened to her pour out her complaint. She is still grieving. She has questions. Ask why. And then during this time, the little prophetic book of Habakkuk has become very dear to her. Now some people may think that she should be mature enough to accept things. I think she is more honest than many Christians are willing to be publicly. And I told her it's okay. She must express her feelings to the Lord and pray through her pain. Now, just want to say a few words about Jesus and this psalm. 
many people will quickly notice that there are many details in this psalm that readily connect with Jesus especially as he suffered on the cross i believe jesus had memorized this psalm he would have recited it memorized it many times when it was read in the synagogue and he heard that being read maybe he felt that this psalm was relating to his calling somehow and i can believe that he was reciting it on the cross two gospels matthew following mark mention that jesus cried out my god my god why have you forsaken me i want you to notice something tremendous though while jesus begins with reciting the psalm whether he had the energy to go through and speak out the whole psalm or not i don't know but the psalm would have gone through his mind but when he comes to the end of that psalm what is it in hebrew there is only one word asa which means he has acted or he has done it now we may remember that as john's gospel records it jesus said tetelestai it is finished jesus didn't speak in greek or english he would have spoken it in hebrew psalm 22 is not a predictive prophecy as such it is a story of an innocent sufferer who cries out to god and jesus is using this prayer because it best suited him and his need jesus was in a sense joining with and identifying with all the sufferings of humanity and experiences he experiences the pain of not experiencing god's deliverance at that time he experienced the pain and the depth of horror of being violated as an innocent person even though i believe god did not forsake him so where was god when jesus on the cross it's a good question to ask i believe god was right there the apostle paul in second corinthians 5 18 and 19 says god was in christ reconciling the world to himself read that text twice he says god was right there in christ and the father did not forsake jesus on the cross in fact in the gospel of john we read john 16:32 you will leave me all alone He's telling his disciples yet i am not alone for my father is with me we read in the gospel of luke the father is right there so jesus asks him to forgive those who are around who are doing what they are doing he hands over his spirit to the father father is not turned away but jesus experiences the pain of an undeserved suffering that is there in the psalm so he expresses those words i have written a short article on this you may find it on the internet friend psalm 22 we are invited to pray the first half of the psalm because we don't know whether we will be seeing the deliverance of god this side of the parousia of the coming of the lord we can pray this prayer with jesus because jesus is praying this prayer with us this was david's prayer and the son of david made it his own we too can make it our own sometimes when we need it and other times when others are going through on behalf of others friends jesus by entering into our world and carrying the painful terror and wickedness of human sin shows us that god has entered into our painful spaces every time we read of christians being killed or other innocent people being killed whether in india or by the fundamentalist fulanis in nigeria we are seeing innocent 
people being killed please note these people have not been vindicated in their lifetime they are like the faithful ones mentioned in the end of chapter 11 of the chapter of faith in hebrews 11 for us to sometimes we may have to wait for the next age for god's vindication but our ultimate deliverance is assured just as the resurrection of jesus is a reality we cling on to jesus so that we share his victory and vindication and the bible says the holy spirit helps us in our pain romans 8 26 27 paul says we don't know how to pray but the holy spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans according to the will of god hebrews chapter 5 verse 7 During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. In the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus cried out, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Mark 14.34 and being in anguish he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground luke 22:44 this beautiful event around the tomb of lazarus john 11 it's a fascinating account jesus intentionally plays out this important act he waits for lazarus to die then even though he assures the grieving sisters that he was the resurrection and the life and he knew he was going to perform a miracle by raising lazarus from the dead how does he face death i wanted to notice that it's very telling on that day standing among grieving loved ones jesus can smell the greatest enemy death the enemy of god and we are given a glimpse into jesus's emotions you will see in john 11 verses 33 and 38 the niv uses the words like deeply moved twice kjv uses the word he groaned in the spirit and was troubled but when john writes he uses a very rare verb embry mau mai it has the idea of to snort with anger the message translation puts it a deep anger welled up within him the living bible says he was moved with indignation and deeply troubled you see jesus was face to face with his greatest enemy the enemy of god the enemy of all of us death and then it says jesus wept there was anger there was sadness as we see the death and suffering in the world god weeps with us and god is angry allow me to tell this story from my teenage years there was a movie that became very popular when we were teenagers bruce lee's movie enter the dragon he had gone inside to defeat that evil man one dr han but before he fights him he has to fight ohara and you can see in that scene of course as teenagers many of us would go and watch it many times his anger as he demolishes ohara but that was not the final enemy he still had to fight the chief enemy jesus was fighting death at the tomb of lazarus but still he had to go to fight death on that cross of course unlike bruce lee jesus destroys death by being killed himself now this is so counterintuitive and but this is what somebody like cs lewis speaks of in the narnia stories he calls it the deep magic 
there is a divine logic of the cross that is foolishness to this world but is the wisdom of god jesus enters our suffering and pain and he defeats he has defeated the greatest enemy death friends for those of us who hold on to jesus we have the ultimate victory through the resurrection and after finishing his battle jesus handed over his spirit to his father meanwhile our loving father the father of our lord jesus has revealed for us he waits for us to hear us pray friends i invite you to enter into that prayer like this prayer in trust and confidence god hears listens he has not forsaken you you feel like that but he is with you let us pray dear sister you are in such deep pain you wonder if life is even worth living like this dear young man you have so many dreams and some things have happened in the past few months and it seems like dark clouds are hiding the sun for you dear pastor as you struggle with financial needs you begin to wonder if it really makes sense to follow your calling to serve others when you are in pain yourself let me encourage you my brother we pastors are also what many refer to as wounded healers we carry our own pain our wounds and find the lord is healing others through us keep pressing on i invite you to pray with me the words of psalm 61 hear my cry o lord attend unto my prayer hear my cry From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you When my heart is overwhelmed please lead me to the rock that is higher Let us pray. 
our Father, Abba, we come as your children. Save us. Lord Jesus, we come to you and like your disciples, we have the same request. Lord, teach us how to pray. Holy Spirit, help us as we pray through our grief and pain and disappointments. Triune God, we know that we will ultimately see your glory over all the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Now shall we receive the benediction? The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace this day and